if a man risks his life for you, you're born to trust him. That's natural. And that's how Ezekiel Yogi rose to great power in the Moya administration. He became extremely powerful and he could get away with virtually anything. Something else also interesting about uh, Oyugi, he was a conduit that was used to get cash to the president. Yeah, he went round and found uh, all these Asians who wanted access to the president went through Oyugi. Yeah, and as always, they came with the briefcases full of cash, and of course, there's always something for Oyugi. So in this way, Oyugi rose to great wealth within a very short time. In fact, it's very interesting, Oyugi, Oyugi's uh, daughter had a wedding right in his rural home in Nyanza. And at that wedding, the kinds of money that was spent was just a glimpse of the wealth that Oyugi had acquired. For instance, that wedding invited renowned Congolese musician Shala Mwana, who spent the whole day entertaining visitors at the wedding. Just try and calculate how much that would have cost, let alone the food and the amazing reception. Many powerful cabinet ministers and even members of the president's own Kalinjin community tried to challenge Oyugi, not knowing his history with the president. They failed miserably. They were always completely unable to break the bond between Ezekiel Oyugi and President Daniel Arap Moy. That bond was way too strong, and we've already seen why. Now, one of the Asian businessmen whom Oyugi introduced to President Moy is worth mentioning here, and that is the man called Ketan Somaya. Ketan Somaya, at the time he was introduced to the president, was barely 20 years old. The very ambitious Ketan Somaya rose to great wealth, and of course, he never forgot Ezekiel Oyugi, and therefore, Oyugi also benefited greatly from his vast wealth and uh, business empire, even as it continued to grow. Yeah, it was almost as if Oyugi's empire grew in tandem. As Somaya rose from a humble small businessman in Kisumu to one of the richest, most prosperous businessmen in the land. For a time, Somaya was also untouchable because the kind of contracts which Oyugi threw uh, to him were all defense related very sensitive stuff related to the security of the country and also the kind of contracts where you make triple digit million profits in just one deal but the down unfortunately or fortunately whatever way you want to look at it Oyugi's downfall was as quick as his rise and it came in such a sad and heartbreaking way you see, what happened was in the assassination of uh, Robert Oko, the person who was sent to lure Oko to his death was actually Oyugi. Yeah? The late Minister of Foreign Affairs, Robert Oko, trusted Oyugi. Yeah? They came from the same area. He trusted him. And, uh, and understandably, Oko believed Oyugi when Oyugi told him he had a plan to get him out of the country because things were not good for him. He had fallen out with the president's trusted aide, Nicholas Biwot, and Oko knew his life was in danger, and he knew he had to get out of the country fast. And so the person who came to fetch uh, Oko was, of course, Hezekiah Oyugi. Well, if you're the superstitious kind, then you'll be able to look at this case and uh, <laughs> justify your beliefs. Because after the assassination of Robert Oko, nothing went right for Oyugi. Everything went south and it continued going south. Now you can catch the conclusion of this uh, amazing uh, story full of suspense about Ezekiel Yugi uh, in the book Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency. As I said earlier, the book is available for only 899. It also wins you three months free membership to my popular club 1999. Okay, get all the details in the video description area below this video in YouTube okay and uh, just get that book right away you'll be amazed there are a lot of other stories about uh, the presidencies of Jomo Kenyatta, Daniel Arap Moy and Moy Kibaki very very interesting insider details you've never heard of if 
I can just mention a few. Very few people know that uh, Jomo Kenyatta was kicked out of his church for two sins. One, drinking too much alcohol. Two, cohabiting with a woman without an official marriage. Very interesting stuff. He was in, reinstated some years back when he promised that he would never again indulge in alcohol. Okay? But then of course other things happened later when he rose to the presidency. That's just one of the amazing uh, stories. Stories that you'll never ever get anywhere else. Similar stories on Daniel Rapmoy. Similar stories on uh, Moe Kibaki. Okay? This has been a special Kumekucha report. Uh, reviewing and giving excerpts from the books I've written in the past so that you can be able to get a glimpse into them because as they say history always always repeats itself thank you very much for your time thank you very much for your attention till next time this is Chris Kumakucha <laughs>